Hey there folks, we're talking about the end of World War I today. And your goal for the screencast is, at the end, you should be able to explain why the Allied Army won World War I. So without further ado, let's hop in. We will start with some review. In 1917, two big things happened. The U.S. declares war on Germany, and the Russian Revolution happened. Uh, remember, the, the group that seizes control of Russia promises peace, land, and bread to the Russian citizens, uh, which means that Russia will be dropping out of World War I. They do, th they do this officially in 1918 with the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, and they give land and money to Germany, which the Germans obviously appreciate. Um, why is this important? Again, we talked about this in uh, the previous screencast, but... For Germany, this means that they're not going to be fighting a two-front war anymore. They can move all of their troops from the Eastern Front on the Russia-German front to the Western Front, where Germany is fighting France and Britain and, excuse me, newly arrived America. Remember the scene in All Quiet when Paul gets into the British trench and sees how much food they have? This is a widespread problem, is that the German army is running out of food and material, so the German command gambles and attacks. They didn't think that they had much time left given how short they were on food and supplies because the British had blockaded their seaports, meaning it was really difficult for Germany's allies to get them food and material. Also, there's some unrest among the soldiers and some, some unrest among the civilians of Germany who think that this war should end. So the German command decides that they need to try to end the war and they will attack to do that. And as you can see that with these red areas here, the attack actually works for a little while. Germany is able to gain some pretty significant portions of land for a short period of time. However, this German offensive eventually stalls out. Uh, there aren't enough, there isn't enough weapons and material coming. The soldiers are being forced to loot to get food instead of continuing to advance. And that makes it hard for this German offensive to continue. There are also very, very heavy German losses, so the German soldiers are slowly running out of the, excuse me, the German army is slowly running out of soldiers. The Americans also arrive in World War I in 1918, and this counteracts the increased German presence on the Western Front. So as German troops are arriving from Russia, they're from the Eastern Front and fighting Russia, there are American troops arriving on the Western Front to bolster the British and the French. In August and September of 1918, the Allies counterattack and finally break through the German lines. German generals realize that they're going to lose, and they ask for an armistice, an agreement to stop fighting. The German army is essentially defeated. However, the interesting thing about this is the German army loses the battle on the Western Front, and they beat the Russians on the Eastern Front, but they're going to lose World War I, despite the fact that they're never going to lose a battle on German soil. So the German army is essentially defeated, even though they, they haven't actually fought a battle and lost a battle on German soil. So on November 9th of 1918, the Kaiser, the leader of Germany, takes off. And an armistice, the agreement to stop fighting, is signed on November 11th at 11, um, 11, 11 at 11 a.m. And it's signed by these new civilian leaders of Germany who take over for the Kaiser. And this armistice is based on French demand, so it's probably not going to be super nice to the Germans, given the fact that the French inv that the French were invaded by Germany and had their countryside kind of blown to smithereens by them. The armistice is signed in this railway car here, and the reason that I mention it is we'll hear about this railway car again next year in World War II, but just know that this is where the Germans signed their... Armistice to end World War One. So what happens because of World War One? Empires are broken up and new nations are created. Russia, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire all crumble into smaller pieces. Also, there's a large impact on the Middle East. Out of the Ottoman Empire, the country of Iraq is formed. And coming out of World War One, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict begins. Also, there's this lost generation of, of people who fought in World War I and some just general destruction. Paul speaks quite eloquently about this in All Quiet on the Western Front, um, that this is just a traumatic experience for an entire generation of people. 
Also, World War I lays the foundation for World War II. So despite World War I being the most giant war and deadliest war that the Earth had ever seen, the end of World War I lays the foundation for an even bigger war. That'd be World War II. Also, another big result of World War I is the U.S. Emergent, emerges as a major power in the British Empire. This is kind of the, the beginning of the decline of the British Empire. So there's a, a kind of a, a role change here as to who the dominant world power is. The British are on the decline and the Americans are on the rise. So a couple other important results of World War I. There's the Treaty of Versailles, which the Allied powers signed with Germany. And it agrees to create the League of Nations to try to keep the peace and avoid another world war. Hint, doesn't happen. Um, it also punishes Germany rather severely. Germany's forced to take the blame for the war. They're paying billions of dollars in reparation to the Allies. They lose territory to France and to other countries. The size of their military is limited. And they lose colonies around the world. They're given to Belgium and Britain. So there are other aspects of the Treaty of Versailles, but these are the biggest ones. Oh, excuse me, I forgot about the last one. Uh, German territory is also occupied as well. British and France, Britain and France occupy the Rhineland, which is at the French border now with Germany. A treaty of, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, saint germain lie is the peace treaty with Austria-Hungary. And this also agrees to the creation of the League of Nations, and the punishment for Austria-Hungary is as follows. It's broken up into multiple countries. They lose land to allied countries in the area and they have to pay reparation to the Allies. Additionally, the size of the Australian, excuse me, the Austrian, not Australian, the size of the Austrian army is limited, similar to what happened to Germany. So this is post-World War I Europe. Um, Germany is smaller, France is bigger. Austria and Hungary are separate countries. Um, yeah, this is how, this is what the world looks like in at the end of 1918. So your goal for this screencast was to explain why the Allied Army won World War I. If you can do that, great. If not, go back and rewatch parts of the screencast. Thanks.